Introduction to the Epistle to the Hebrews, Lesson 4, Chapter 4, Verses 1 through 13, with Dr. Galen Curra. Welcome to this brief introduction to Hebrews 4, 1 through 13. Our modern Bibles are translated from the oldest Greek manuscripts. The text has been well preserved across 19 centuries. Nevertheless, there are slight variations found in the manuscripts. For example, two ancient manuscripts read, Let us enter, instead of we enter at verse 3. In verses 6 and 11, certain ancient manuscripts read disbelief in place of disobedience. You can find more examples of textual variants at the website hebrews.cura.download. Let's take a look at that. We launch a web browser, we type in hebrews.cura.download, and we're brought to this page. We go to the links to lessons and click on Lesson 4. This brings us to a section of the page where we can choose to view textual variants. And here you have several more examples. There are several vocabulary items that could be of interest to us. In verse 6, the phrase translated receive the good news is the term euangelizo, to evangelize, which is used in the Hebrew Bible of the Israelites and in the New Testament of Christian believers. In verse 8, the name Joshua can be translated Joshua or Jesus, a rather common name amongst Jews, reason for which some older translations actually have the name Jesus in this verse. But we're talking about Joshua, the successor of Moses, the military leader of the people when they entered Canaan. In verse 9, the phrase, let us strive, means to make every effort to be very conscientious. And in verse 13, to give an account is the Greek term logos, which is used of the word of God and of the word of scripture in the book of Hebrews. You can find more lexical items at hebrews.cura.download. Click on definitions. And here you will find several more such terms. You Greek buffs and grammarians may be interested in this chart available on the website regarding five classes of Greek conditional sentences, all of which may be translated in English as if this, then that. The historical background to our text refers us to two main passages of the Hebrew Bible, Genesis chapter 2, where first century readers and hearers knew the account of God's creating of heaven, of earth, and of the Garden of Eden, and Psalm 95, which deals with the time when God grew angry with Hebrew disbelief and disobedience when they feared danger, and so he denied them entry into their promised land. Nevertheless, he promised that those who trusted him to keep his promise would be rewarded. And some first century Jewish Christians also feared danger from the Roman government, some of whom were tempted to convert back to the dead works of law-keeping. Our current passage fits into Dr. Westfall's discourse analysis under the general topic Consider Jesus to be the apostle of our confession. Under that point B, let us respond to Jesus' voice today and enter the rest. Under that point two, since the promise of the rest is still open, let us try to enter. And we deal with points A and B. There is still a Sabbath rest for God's people, and so let us make every effort to enter God's rest. Modern readers may find the logic of this passage a bit odd. So as you read through it, try to follow the grammatical flow of logical connectors. There are three great exhortations found in chapters 2, 3, and 4, each of which is introduced with the connector, therefore. In chapter 4, 
the exhortation is followed immediately by three explanations in verses 2, 3, and 4, each of which is introduced by the classical English grammatical connector for. And then two inferences are drawn from verse 1, each of which again is introduced by therefore. Verse 6 is followed by an explanation with the word for and its own inference beginning with thus or therefore. And the second great inference in verse 11 followed by two reasons, one introduced by for and the other by and. For a fuller account of this logic, see the website hebrews.cura.download. Here we have the same logical analysis followed by content and a summary chart. As you read through the text and as you teach it to others, watch for these basic Christian doctrines which derived from the biblical text itself. In verses 1 and 10, salvation by faith alone. 3 and 7, the authority of Scripture. Verse 4, God as Creator. 12 through 13, God's omniscience. He is the all-knowing one. And in other verses, human responsibility. So your assignment for this week is to read through Hebrews 4, 1 through 13, once a day in different translations. From the website, you can click on netbible.org. Go to Hebrews chapter 4 and click on Net 2 to see a drop-down list of other translations. Please jot down your notes, observations, and queries that you want to discuss in your Bible study group. If you do pastoral work, then meet with your coach or with those whom you coach and talk together about ways in which to assure believers of their salvation by faith alone. If you wish, you may join us this Thursday morning from a YouTube channel, Powell Hurst Men Live Stream, where we will be discussing queries such as these. What two actions must humans take to activate God's promises? What two mistakes must humans avoid making not to be lost? And several others.